New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning. And Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey, though he's not here in the role of a prosecuting attorney at the moment. I'm not. I couldn't be because this is in Berkeley County. No jurisdiction, baby. No so jurisdiction. we can violate whatever law we want with impunity. <laughs> no, you're on camera, John. Oh, well, that's true. We can violate any law. <laughs> impunity and immunity, by the way. Right. Our guest in this segment is Don Blankenship. He's a candidate for Senate. Good morning, Don. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. How are you? Good, sir. We had you on the program a couple years ago uh, when you were making this run, and you were you made it as a Republican. You're making it as a Democrat this time. Uh, explain the party switch and the decision to run for office again, Don. Well, it's mostly delivering a message that, uh, you know, we're not as divided as the, the press or the national TV or the national parties would suggest we are. You know, I think that uh, most West Virginians believe the same things when it comes to illegal immigration and drug and priorities and budgets and so forth. And I'm just uh, mostly trying to make that point that uh, in order to, if you will, uh, put the establishment in its place, we're going to have to quit being divided as a state or as a country and uh, and work together. Did, did your relationship with the Republican Party, Don, begin to deteriorate when Donald Trump failed to endorse you and, in fact, seemed to publicly come out against you? I really didn't mind too much as coming out, you know, against me or whatever. That's his, that's his prerogative. But, uh, you know, he and uh, Mitch McConnell and others influenced uh, Fox News and so forth to uh, spread a lot of lies about going to jail for manslaughter and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was amazing to see uh, not only what they did, but uh, how easily it is for them to get by with it. We had clear evidence that uh, McConnell had called uh, Murdoch and asked that uh, he make sure that I not win, and Murdoch had sent emails to his executives uh, in that regard, telling them to dump on me hard. And in fact, they did for the last uh, two days before the election. And and so I, th I think that that message and the fact that, uh, you know, we have an establishment that's uh, out of control is a very important message. What are the biggest issues for you in this campaign? Well, I think the uh, the biggest one is the one I'm speaking of there. I think the, the government is so corrupt and so uh, focused on, you know, benefiting themselves. And, of course, I think our focus on uh, the wars all the time and uh, the illegal immigration and, of course, not treating the drug epidemic as a drug e epidemic, you know, losing 112,000 Americans per year. Uh, we've lost more people, I guess, in the last six years than we've lost in most any war, probably in any war we ever fought. Mr. Gilstrap. Um, I, I'm confused. You're, you're joining the race as a Democrat to show that we're, I wrote as fast as I can, I'm going to get the quote wrong. Um, we're not as divided as the press and others would lead us to believe. And then um, the establishment is out of control, the government is corrupt. That's not uniting language. So what am I missing? Uh, you're missing that the effort is not to unite with the establishment, criticizing the establishment and being disconnected to the establishment is is synonymous with the goal of uniting as a people uh you know west virginians don't believe in illegal immigration they don't believe in transgender surgeries they don't believe in uh you know the drug epidemic being not even on the list of priorities not being reported on they don't they don't believe hardly anything that the national political party believes they don't leave believe in legalized theft uh, so it's it's a situation where the the will of the people is not being reflected in the behavior of the politicians in D.C., and the people need to uh, look at what we agree on and work together rather than look at what we disagree on and allow the government to go on its own path without being held accountable to the people. But isn't the will of the national, the the Democrat the National Democratic Party representing the will of the Democrat voters writ large across the country. Well, again, this election's in West Virginia, not across the country. And no, the political, the Democratic political party platform nor their behavior bears any resemblance to the beliefs of the West Virginia Democrat. 
uh, you know, West Virginia Democrats typically are, you know, socially uh, conservative, but they, of course, a lot of them are uh, impoverished or at least at the bottom of the pay scale. So they're very attached to many of the Democratic uh, policies. But when it comes to the national policies uh, that I just spoke about, uh, they're as staunchly against it as the as the Republicans in West Virginia. And by sending me to D.C., they send the message that uh, they are not in concert with the Democratic Party leadership. So if you're elected as a Democrat to the U.S. Senate, would you caucus with the Republicans? Uh, I don't know exactly what I would do. It would depend on what uh, they told me when I get there. But the key thing to remember is, you know, one of the typical comments or whatever is how you're going to do anything. If you go to Washington and you're at odds with all of them, the the point is that we don't want to do what they're doing. We don't want to spend a trillion dollars a year more than we have to spend. We don't want to be at war all the time. We don't want to have illegals flooding into the country. We don't want 10,000 to 15,000 people a month dying from illegal drugs. We don't want to be dependent on China for our prescription drugs. We don't want to be acting like Taiwan and China are two different countries and being dependent on Taiwan for microchips and everything else is not uh, you know the same as being dependent on China. And it's uh, we're falling so far behind technologically that we're no longer going to be the superpower. The Chinese are, uh, if not already ahead of us, certainly catching up quick with uh, nuclear submarines and aircraft carriers and expansion around the world. And China has, in many places, uh, a better reputation than the United States does because they don't go in and, and engage in wars. They go in and invest and and do business, but they don't they don't send their military to, to every country in the world like we do. Shortly after you declared, uh, Mike Pushkin, who's the chair of the West Virginia uh, Democratic Party, said um, that uh, Don Blankenship is not a Democrat and does not represent the values of our party. Do you expect the uh, West Virginia Democratic Party to rally behind you and support your candidacy? Well, I would hope not. Uh, the West Virginia Democratic Party or the National Democratic Party uh, is not in concert with the West Virginia voters and not in concert with me. It's a, it's a situation, if you actually go out and do a poll of how the Democrats feel about the issues we were just discussing, you'll find that they don't disagree very much with the Republicans. Uh, but the, the, the establishment, whether it be the West Virginia Democratic Party, the National Democratic Party, or the, or the government or whatever, uh, they're doing what they want to do rather than what the people want them to do. Well, congratulations. I'm not very often startled by an answer, and, and that one was one. So, <laughs> Mr. Matt Harvey. Uh, good morning, Mr. Blankenship. Um, have, you, you've been involved with politics for quite a while now in West Virginia, and your, your name's well known. Um, have you done any sort of polling on, on your success or your ability to, to win a primary and a democrat uh no but what i what i might explain to you is that as you said i've been at this for a while in 2004 when i ran when i helped brent benjamin beat warren mcgraw it was considered impossible that you couldn't beat warren mcgraw he was on the front page of forbes magazine brent human written a book about him he's unbeatable and he was the most uh liberal judge in the country and west virginia was the judicial hellhole of the country uh, I've also been at odds with mine workers. I've been at odds with a lot of a lot of things. And when you start these movements, uh, people think you're crazy. And maybe you are. Maybe I've been crazy. But uh, there wasn't anyone that thought Brent Benjamin could be Warren McGraw. There wasn't anyone that thought the day would come when United Mine Workers would practically be irrelevant. There wasn't anyone that thought that Republicans would have such a high majority in the state of West Virginia. Uh, all the things that I've tried to do over the years have at first seemed crazy to people, so I'm not concerned that this one seems crazy. But the uh, the Democratic Party uh, needs to be changed, <laughs> and West Virginia uh, is being given the opportunity to send someone to the CIA, me, who uh, understands that. And so if I might be able to make a difference in terms of uh, you know, the Democratic Party thinking that the border's being wide open or 
uh, being dependent on China for your prescription drugs and so forth is is insanity. So you know, whether I'll caucus with them or not is not important, but they will hear what West Virginia people believe, and that's what they need to hear in D.C. So you're you're banking on that there's more old West Virginia Democrats left than new progressive Democrats that are more aligned with the National Party? Well, again, you're so focused on my winning. We hardly won any of the uh, of the West Virginia uh, House of Delegate races where I put a candidate on every ballot in 2006. Uh, it takes time to make change. I'm not personally in need of a job, but I don't personally care whether I go to D.C. for the sake of the glamour or prestige of being a senator. This is about making a difference. And in order to make a difference, you have to be some, doing something that people don't uh, don't expect you to do. You can't, you know, as I say, be warmed by being in the middle of the crowd and expect to change the direction of the crowd. So, uh, you know, I, this will make a difference. It may be a subtle difference. It may be a huge difference. Uh, but uh, people are just hearing someone say publicly, like myself, what they're saying to each other at the dinner table, in the churches, in the bars. I mean, for the for us to be having a nationwide protest against Israel, uh, it, it's, in, it's insanity in most West Virginians' name. If you go to, you know, if you're a regular churchgoer, you can't be for uh, anti-Israel policies. You can't be for wars all over the world and so forth. So it's uh, it's a situation where, you know, what I'm saying is what I think people believe and are saying to each other, not what is popular in the D.C. or among the establishment. So, Don, where's your bully pulpit for this? Without the, the backing of a party or whatever, and obviously there are shows like this where uh, you, you're you able to spread your message. How else do you expect, are you anticipating getting this message out? Are you doing uh, town halls, that sort of thing? No, in the next four days you'll see 4,000 ads, probably three or 4,000 ads. <clears throat> you know, the it's important to get out and meet people and know people and so forth, but my time is limited. But what I <clears throat> excuse me, I understand that the television and the media is the uh, is the voice because that's the voice that has done great damage to me over the years because they don't want the establishment to change either. So I'll be relying heavily on uh, on ads and and so forth because I know that the national press nor the state press is going to give me much publicity because uh, the government doesn't want them to. So, you know, it's a, it's a situation where you do what you can and hope you can make a difference. Don Blankenship, our guest, candidate for a U.S. Senate seat that is currently held by Senator Joe Manchin, who endorsed one of your opponents in the primary, Don. Uh, Cecil Roberts, the president of the UMW, uh, basically came out against you as well. Uh, do you have support among coal miners, the union members? You mentioned them earlier in the conversation previously in this segment, Don. Well, again, I, I don't poll them, but uh, people, you know, when, you, when, you talk, when I was talking just a moment ago about how things can be different than people think they are, uh, three times uh, I had elections at Massey as, uh, as to whether the members of the Massey team, the coal miners, would join the union. And we won all three of those elections. Once people hear the truth, uh, many times they will uh, they will vote entirely different than you think they will vote. No one thought that we could hire seventy percent of our coal miners off the United Mine Workers panels in Boone County, of all places, and then have them vote three separate times to be non-union. So. You know, again, I'm used to people being confused by what we do, but uh, you can't make a difference and be, you know, in the middle of the crowd. Don, we've got uh, a minute or two left. Go ahead and talk to our audience and tell them why they should vote for you for U.S. Senate in the Democratic primary. Well, they should vote for me because I will make a difference uh, as opposed to people that will go out there and do what Schumer or Pelosi uh or uh, McConnell or whoever wants them to do, uh, I will go up there and, and tell them what West Virginians expect them to do for this state and that we do, we do not believe in immoral laws. We don't believe in being entangled with other countries. Uh, we don't believe that the number one priority is wars in other parts of the world when we're losing 113,000 young people per year to drug deaths. So uh, <clears throat> we believe that the border in the United States is more important than the border in Ukraine. And uh, 
we believe that uh, Mountaineer lives matter and that uh, the government owes us the protection uh, from terrorists living in the country. We don't believe that supporting Hamas is in the U.S.'s best interest, and we might not be in the street burning flags and so forth, but we will send a message in a civil way, and that's by sending me to the D.C. to tell them what you think. Don, thank you very much for your time this morning, and best of luck to you in the upcoming election. Thank you very much. Don Blankenship at uh, 930, a candidate for